So, Andy, it's a pleasure to have you here at Penn State again. My pleasure. Third time, I'm thinking, right? It, it is. There you go. There you go. So, uh, wonderful to have you. And thank you for responding to our inquiry. Um, we've been doing this program for a number of years now where we have experts come in. We like to pick a question and work the question through and get different angles. So, um, our attention lately has turned to the question of retention. And um, like many institutions, we're kind of getting, trying to get our heads around this. What does it mean? And in particular, in the online learning space, um, we, we want to get students having a successful experience, whatever that means. And I'm wondering if you can help us understand from your framework, what does retention, what does that word, or I guess another word that's used closely with that is persistence. But what does that mean to you as, a, as an educator? So at a very high level, it's just the student comes into our environment, they have a desired goal, and it is in part our job to ensure that that goal is met. So at a very high level, that's a retention to me. But um, our universities have been really working very hard on this for um, the last few years. It's been our top focus. And one of the key things we found is that retention actually has a layers of metrics associated with it. Mm. And each one of those metrics are important. If you just think about mm. um, the idea that, let's say that goal is a degree completion, um, that can lead up to that. So for example, persistence you mentioned, which we define very clearly by um, a student takes a course and then within two weeks they're involved in another course. So that's our definition of, of okay. persistence. Um, we find that the amount of times that students take breaks are a key indicator that mm -hmm. they may not be on path to retention. Mm -hmm. So persistence is huge. Course completion is huge. GPA is huge. Um, all of our courses have learning outcomes for all the assignments. We find that how students are doing relative to learning outcomes are really important. You know, and then basic things like course completion, end of course survey, so a qualitative experience um, with universities. If you look at all of those metrics, um, individually as well as summed up together, they give you a very comprehensive picture of overall retention. Can I play off on one point there you made, which has always kind of interest me. If, um, if, students, if the student goal might not be degree completion. It's something else. I, I, I don't know. It's a shorter term thing. How do we know as educators that that's, that that's what they would define as, hey, I had a successful experience. I got the one course I wanted or two courses I wanted. How do we know that? This is, a, a, to me, a profoundly important question. And it's something that I always feel gets missed in the MOOC conversation. Maybe a student, for example, taking a MOOC really wants to learn how, and let's just say it's a cooking class. Mm -hmm. They're not interested in the full menu. They just really want to learn how to do a, a great steak or something. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they get that, and that's what they, they sought to do, and they accomplished it. So just because they didn't complete the entire MOOC doesn't mean that they didn't have you know, a vibrant, successful experience. I would say same is true for the online environment or any environment, in particular with our type of students at, at Ashford University who are primarily adult learners. Um, have different types of goals than, let's say, 18 to 22-year-old students. And so for me, it's always what's best for the student. And I think we have to be very careful about how we define mm -hmm. retention. It's actually, I think, part of what should be a national conversation. When you look at it at a national level, we simply measure retention by iPads data, but we know that you know, that kind of data spread across all the different types of universities really isn't the best accurate measure. So I think if it really is, you know, if a student really is their goal is to complete a course or a certificate and not necessarily a degree, um, then whatever's best for the student is what we should be after. And, and I would even say, you know, there are times where students, and I made the point about, you know, breaks being troublesome, but what if a student really needs to take a break? What if they have a family situation? Sure, sure. What if money or something that's more important, like taking care of their kids, mm -hmm. um, gets top of the list? I, I think we should allow for that. So I think we have to be very careful that in this pursuit of retention, we're focusing on students first and foremost, no matter what. A, a, and not a perception of what we think success means. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, a, or a poorly defined generality that yeah. comes from on high. We have to contextualize it within the environment that we serve. So given that as a background, the second question goes into this idea then of um, if you had your druthers, all resources, all time, what kind of a system might you create? Pay the student a million dollars to <laughs> graduate. No, I'm well, just <laughs> actually. I'm just kidding. Um, if, if, if money was no expense, what I, what I have found, and is a personal passion of mine, is that we have to personalize the environment for them. Um, even where I work, which is a fairly large scale online learning environment, uh, I still think that even though we've done some customization, it's still largely a one size fits all approach. And so for me, I think we have to be very serious about looking at each student individually. Let me just give you an example. One student might need a full time mentor. One student might be completely fine, independent, mm -hmm. moving their way through it. 
One student might need 24-7 tutoring. One student may not. One student may test out a college algebra. The other student needs to take basic fractions. And so we have to figure out how to create an environment that customizes to the individual student need. So if I had any amount of money, no questions asked, I would figure out how to truly personalize and customize the environment for every individual need. So given that background, because um, you're talking about data yeah. and access to the data and knowing, for example, in the case of the thinking about from the student orientation, knowing what their goals are, not what we perceive their goals to be. Um, what, what's a first step that we might take to get to this idea of this personalized environment? That's a good question. I think initial diagnostic assessments, both cognitive and affective, and then based on the data from that, you begin to develop you know, interventions at the individual level if you can, but even thinking about it in terms of different pathways for different types of students. Um, so for example, let's say you had a diagnostic assessment of a particular student and you found out that you know, they're gonna be much better in this path, mm. right? And let's say that path involved more tutoring or that path involved a higher level involvement with their admissions counselor or their student advisor, then that student might get that path. Um, however, if a student you know, seems very independent, you know, not necessarily needing those kinds of direct one-on-one -on -one types of measures, they might get a path that maybe they can expedite their way through with less support. And I think in doing that differentiation of the experience, and again, because we're at scale, I think we can pull some of this off, whereas if you're smaller, I think you were harder. I actually think overall um, the cost like, versus some of the advantages you get for the student not getting those supports, I think they would, to some extent, I think they'd pan out. Interesting. So, so your, your idea is using the data in a way that begins to get to that customization. I, I was thinking the word that kept on popping into my head was profile. Yeah. So if we can get to that profile of the learner, understand who they are, what their goals are, what their life experiences are, we can then as educators begin to craft an environment that, that better, is better tailored. And that's the personalization yeah. topic. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. And, and I think we, the, the part that I struggle with is particularly at my, at my environment where everything is scale and you're trying to develop things that are very much based on that economy of scale. Um, we can't miss the human component. So there's a lot to be said about the cognitive. But I mentioned the affective. I think it's huge. I think particularly our students, they need to be motivated. They need to be inspired. They need to feel like they matter. They need to feel like they're more than an ID number. Um, and I would argue that's no matter what. So somehow within this scale and driving these interventions based on some customization, we cannot miss this aspect. That's we can't point. miss the human part of it. That's a good point. Uh, otherwise, it is a big engine. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't think that's going to aid in retention. It's not. And I, I, you know, one of my, I'll just you know, I'll say it, I think one of my biggest fears in working for a for-profit is that students are seen as a revenue cycle and not as a person who has dreams and goals and ambitions and all that sort of stuff. So it's central. Right? Because if you think about education, it's transforming lives when done well. And so even though retention and getting students to succeed, that's, that's important. That's, that's, that, that's a good thing. Um, but it has to be in mind with who the student actually is and what it is that they're actually about and you know, all that sort of stuff. Well, knowing you and knowing your heart, the student will always be in the forefront. Yes. Yeah, yeah I pre always appreciated that about you, Andy. Thanks, so, Larry. So my pleasure, and yeah. thank you for having us. My pleasure. All righty. Thank you.